Lenore von Stein, and this is uh, The Facts, uh, yet another episode of The Facts. And I'm here tonight with Beth Griffith, Andrew Bolotowski, and Rachel Evans. And we're rehearsing for uh, an episode that we're, we're going to film. And it's it, this is about um, being a coward. And the more I, I think about it, the less I, I, I thought it was a great idea when I started out. But uh, I don't know if I'm, you know, just like beating a dead horse or something. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just going to read this thing that James Baldwin wrote on the subject. He said, um, uh, how, uh, how, how have we managed to become what we have, in fact, become? And if we are, as indeed it seems, it seems to be, so empty and desperate, what do we do about it? How shall we put ourselves in touch with reality? And that's what I'm trying to do all the time. My real self is, is, is just as exotic, as, as it, if not more exotic, than and my fantasies. <laughs> jumped right into the tune. Uh, break up, okay. So do you want to try that again with, with, with all? Sure. With all, with all, okay, so. That would be cool. That would be cool. this is a rehearsal. Well, <laughs> well I, I was forthright and. This is the show. <laughs> yeah. It says using f flute, full tea. Yeah, show. This is a rehearsal. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are those things you do before <laughs> you present it. But sometimes we're 
Um, let's try it. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's try breakup, okay? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. And, uh, okay. So it's uh, three for shkabothing. Uh, I gotta put on my glasses. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, what's the lead in? Oh, Give the kid. He's gonna I'll, do it. I'll be happy to. Well, yeah, we around and it's a whole new uh, dollar dollar um, well we're gonna to play it a lot of different okay I looked up the I looked up the definition of the word coward I got two definitions and then I stopped anyway uh, coward one who shows disgraceful fear or timidity and um, and the, there was a second definition, one who shows ignoble fear in the face of danger or pain. And that, that definition made me, I was in a, many years ago I was in a serious accident and I was in a hospital and I had a lot of pain and, and everybody on the wards, the orthopedic ward, you hear people screaming at night and some nights it was me. And um, so anyway, this was an orderly, you know, because you give them all, you know, you, you made for the people who work their extra work, they had to go get your painkillers and stuff. And the orderly said to me one day, he said, you know what's wrong with you late at night, three o'clock in the morning, I'm practically dying. He says, you're afraid of the pain. Let's try. Uh, let's try new music for the quartet, mm -hmm. since it's new music for the quartet. Um, feeling silly tonight. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I can play around a little bit here. So the flute plays the soprano. Measure 15 two times, or is that overkill? No, it's not overkill. No, no. It's not the overkill part. No, 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 no. <laughs> Especially when one of the sopranos decides she wants to have a gleeful time. <laughs> <laughs> we will bring her back into order. <laughs> um, okay, so could you give us the cue? And Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, 
Good on that last part. <laughs> um, okay, okay, okay. Um, oh, you told the story, Andrew. When I, oh when I and yeah, and it was I, in rehearsal. I told the story. Yeah, no, but it was uh, when I talked about this cowardice thing that I, this was going to be the theme to. to for exploration, that your father said something about don't buy a house or you'll become a coward or something. It like had to do with the things that uh, you shouldn't do. Actually, it had to do if you're up for tenure in the teaching position, and one of them was uh, don't buy a red sports car, uh, don't uh, uh, don't have your wife or allow her to become pregnant, uh, and don't buy a house, brand new house. And, it, and the other thing, the side thing was if you buy a house, which of course you're going to buy on a mortgage you become afraid because you owe money over a long period of time and you have to answer to that debt for the next 30 years and everything you do is determined by answering to that debt. It's the American way. Rooney. Um, let's try Alfred Hitchcock's construction. So what I was thinking about with this tune was the way Alfred Hitchcock 
and I, I don't, I, I'm far from capturing it at all, but it's the beginning. The way Alfred Hitchcock created this, I, I, I wanted some insight into the, into the way that he built a story, um, you, you know, is using both the visual and the text and, you know, the elements he had to use. And um, because, because I like the way he builds his story, you know, especially when it's successful. And, um, uh, and I think this, that there's a real um, unique, you know, anyway, so anyway, that's a unique flavor there or something. Construction, you know, he builds a certain kind of house. And um, he so this is... Doesn't have a mortgage on it. <laughs> right? Presumably. No, he makes millions. He, and he probably made millions. Had, um, he had enough money to buy his house outright. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, so he let's... Never about <laughs> <laughs> and right. he never had to worry about tenure. And he never had to worry about tenure. That's right. So <laughs> let's... Uh, What's the cue here? It's the viola cue, oh, bar viola. 25. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to give, you don't need me to count this off, right? No, Rachel will do it all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was, I was thinking that really what uh, there's in, in To Catch a Thief there's this scene where Cary Grant and, and Grace Kelly when they're first they're, they have this long this flirtation it's complex because she's trying he's a jewel thief and she's trying to catch him and she's like this spoiled little rich girl and 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 there's this scene where that she brings she forces him to take her on a picnic and drives in her sports car on the Riviera and 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 she has chicken and you know elegant rich guy's food, you know, little chicken wings and little beer and, you know, little peasant, little not so. And uh, and they have this conversation. I think this what and there's also a, a movie that Hitchcock did about a serial killer, which is fabulous. And um, I can't remember the name, late in his career. And anyway, this piece, I think, is about that serial killer movie and that to catch it, that scene and to catch a thief for what that's mm -hmm. worth. Um, is there anything in this Alfred Hitchcock construction that you want to look at again? Particularly, although you played it quite nicely, so I don't know why you would. That's good. Okay, let's try that. Is there a bar or something you want to Thank you. 
That was your piece, Lenore, all the component parts. <laughs> sort of re In re restructured. Yes. Restructured. <laughs> restructured. Or, or destructured. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking why, among the things I was thinking while you were playing that was the difference between the Alfred Hitchcock, that, that to take a thief scene with a class warfare such as it was and that, you know, in this Hollywood, that evolution to now like the, you know, the Real Housewives of New Jersey or something, which is unbelievable. Uh, and um, <laughs> it's... Um, uh, or the real housewives of New York City or Los Angeles that are even worse. The, real, the New Jersey housewives look good compared to these New York and <laughs> L.A. housewives. I mean, these are, these are uh, and and I, I heard Noam Chomsky say something that really scared me. I, I mentioned on an earlier episode in the facts, uh, Amy Goodman was asking him what he thinks about current politics in the United States, and he says, yeah. "I've never seen anything like it." And he he's not funny, you know. I mean, and he knows history well, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, so, should we try? Can, can I hear uh, what, what's something else we got here? Finding Dad. Mm -hmm. Finding Dad. Is that necessary to have? I can pick it up. No, no, no. It's okay. Leave it where it is. Okay. As, as I say, we'll get it on the rebound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's good. <laughs> and now, is it attainable? Okay. <laughs> This is, as I say, now made immortal. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time in my life, in my in my twenties, when I had a much more active social thirties. I had a much more active social life than I did I do now. But I I used to dread a lot big social occasions. It was always such a bummer, and so much more than I do now. Now I I well, you know for what it's worth, you know it's. Because I, I was thinking about this cowardness thing, and the cowardness has something to do with um, what you're doing and the company you keep, you know. Um, or at least in my case, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't want to be, like, confessing, because um, people don't like that. That's the only reason not to do it. Okay, finding yeah. dad. <laughs> We do it on cell phones all day long. Confess. <laughs> Confess. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. In, in public, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you never hear it there. You just hear on in the street on cell phones, always right behind you. <laughs> you know, when you're waiting for the light to change. Exactly. <laughs> Whose cue is this? It's mine. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Maybe okay. rack away. <laughs> took a ride to the coast. <laughs> a leave of absence. A leave of absence. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. With me with, well, we way. have, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, all right, so we, we know how to, we, we, we knew how to. You know, on the French <laughs> Riviera. <laughs>
was a good show.